What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight's uh, Tuesday, I almost said Monday, MLB baseball slate. I hope everybody had a nice long weekend. Uh, Sheets, how was yours? And then uh, we'll jump into the slate. Well, we've been every, I've been uh, all over the place this weekend. Went into the city a couple of times. Uh, some for good stuff, some for health stuff, some for whatever stuff. But been really, uh, I've been really, uh, really uh, active and really busy. And uh, and from a DFS perspective, I did pretty. I did all right this weekend. But uh, looking forward to. I, I'm gonna. Well, we're gonna do a football video after it. So I'm gonna get nice and I'll, I'll get pumped for football at, at, during the football video. But I'm kind of psyched for baseball tonight. They have that um, million dollars. They have a, a 2,500, which is pays a million for first. And what, what what's the maximum people can enter? If people are entering 100 times or something, how many people? How, what's the max entries that people are going to be fighting against I, in that one? I think it's it's, it's 33. <laughs> Great. <laughs> which will mean 33. there's so that's probably like six people will probably. How many people do you think? How many people do you think people are do max thirty three? Like 20 I think like six, six, six to ten. I would say six to ten. Okay. Yeah, that's like seventy five thousand dollars. Is that right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's a lot, but I'm excited. Uh, I'm just gonna be playing my one, and hopefully that that. Can yeah, well, good, good, good luck. Good, good luck finding the right combination of brewers. I guess I, I don't know. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll 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 get into it. Uh, first of all, uh, we'll we'll get to it. But uh, uh, as far as weather goes, I. I will be very shocked if they play this Yankee game today. Um, yeah, there's weather concerns at like in a few places, and that's that's a real a real issue. Um, but let's do you want to. It's, like, it's like pouring, and it's it's pouring. It's supposed to pour more. I mean, there's just no way. Yeah. Know. Well, let's pull up your screen and see if we can find yes. a way to get different, and uh, hopefully yes. find a way that one of us can make a million dollars, or or yes. any of, any of but, but, it's, but it's but it's but it's fine because you know what? Like I said, we don't make it uh, today. We'll make it Sunday. So there, there it is. Two that's times. It. It's been a long time since we've had two in a week that you could win a million dollars at. That's true. Um, that's true. All right. So let's talk. Let's, I guess we have to, what do you have here first here? You have the Toronto Baltimore. I have Toronto Baltimore first. Yeah. Um, I can't figure out what to do here exactly. <laughs> um, I think that Toronto is a semi-viable contrarian stack. I believe in Bradish's like talent. I think he's actually a, he got decent stuff. I also think Mitch White has looked just awful. And I, I actually thought this kid has actually has, has a little bit of talent as well. He's looked terrible since he's joined the Blue Jays. Um, I could see an argument for, for both sides of this offense. It's not a great hitting weather. It's only 75 degrees, which is fine. Uh, but the wind blowing in a little bit, uh, it's very humid. I, I think both these teams are both in play for being interesting stacks not you know not outside the chalk and i don't think they're going to be overly popular so i'm interested a little bit in both the sides of these but not not overly interested if that makes any sense yeah i'll just say right now is that if if i play a five-man stack in that 2500 it will not be Malone. um yeah i just it's just not gonna happen <laughs> i i don't care what the buy-in is i don't care what what you know whatever it is there's this it's just gonna be way too long uh if, if i play milwaukee at all it'll be you know, something, something, something funky. You know what I mean? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a Bobby stack of some kind, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so with that, the reason I bring that up is, is every one of these kind of pivot stacks, I have to kind of give some kind of consideration to. So, yeah. so uh, Toronto always shows up as kind of like a, as tied for second in these course slates, you know, and Toronto is one of those teams that I have tied for second. So I'm going to totally put them in my, throw them in the hopper and maybe, maybe they, they turn out to be the one. Cause it's pro what I'm probably going to end up doing just, so you know, I'm probably going to pick one team to five man um, of these pivot stacks. I don't know exactly what's going to be yet. And I certainly think Toronto is completely reasonable, you know, and, and I think pitching wise, you can, you can do it. Um, we'll get to that stuff later, but, and I wouldn't mess around. I'd play the normal dudes, you know, Guerrero, Springer, Hernandez, Bichette's, uh Chapman, I guess I like Espinal. Uh, also, I don't usually like to play Tapia um, just because I, I would imagine Espinel doesn't play today just for what it's, you don't think so? it's possible he does, but I don't think so. And, and, and catcher, I think Dan, I think Daniel Jansen, he's on the he's on the the, the, the starting parade right now, I think. Um, um, I would I would guess they'd play Kirk, but it's possible it could be Jansen. I don't know. I didn't well, know I, last two days. Well, Kirk at 5400. I, I mean, obviously, that won't be highly owned, but I, I don't know if I want to do that. 
They're um, crazy expensive. That's one thing. It's really, uh, really hard to get a stack in without playing Biggio and potentially Bradley as well. And 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 I think that if you, if you're looking at it just from a clear, I mean, what, I just want to remind everybody, Bradish is really good. This is a top young arm talent in the league. Um, it's not like we're talking about it. We're picking on a guy who's just a, a, just terrible because he pitches for Baltimore. And by the Baltimore is actually better than people think too. So I just want to point that out. But because I because I think you could make a pretty good case for the for the other side of this as well at a you know much much cheaper cost. Although they're not that cheap at the very top of the lineup. No. Any interest in Baltimore for you? I'm trying, but yeah. I can't quite get it. Uh, yeah. Like you said, because the guys I would want to play are just are just a little bit too expensive, and I just think they're better players in other games that i am probably yeah. more inclined to go to. So I'm probably not going to end up doing this game, but I'm just. But again, I'm trying to talk through it because if if it if I get get that feel, you know what I mean, from talking through it, that it is what I want to do. I, I'll do it. I'm right. probably not going to end up doing this, but but uh, this is on a slate like this. This is what's going to happen. Everybody's projection system is going to produce the same lineups. You're going to get all the Milwaukee. So you're going to have to just pick one that's not projected quite as well and realize that you're going to get the ownership break and just hope that the ownership break you get um, is, is, is sufficient. Um, and Toronto's on my list. I don't know if that's going to be the one, but one thing I will tell you is I'm not going to be playing either of these pitchers. Yep. Um, I, I, I can't promise that I, that I wouldn't, uh, take a look yet later, but it wouldn't certainly not be in the 2,500. <laughs> um, all right. Minnesota, look, it's a pretty simple, I think with, with Minnesota and, and New York, right? If they, this isn't this, they're not playing. If, if, if they somehow play, I think both pitchers are in play, especially Cole, obviously is obviously the play, but if, if they're, I just, I, I agree with you as of right now, I, I want to kind of cross this one off. All right. Well, if you want, let's have fun. Let's just say and just for, for, for analysis purposes, if they said that the oh my god big miracle the, the sky is clearing would you have Cole as your top pitcher on this slate or no probably okay probably I mean I currently have him ranked like really really barely slightly at the top um, yeah it's, it's and, and not by much uh, so uh, I don't know uh, in any case I'm, I'm there's no way I'm playing it's, yep in this, in this quagmire it's not happening yep I hear you. Um, all right. Um, how about so Cincinnati, Chicago? Um, I, I I honestly feel like this game feels very cross off ish. Uh, oh, I just I, I disagree with that. Really? Okay. I think um, I, well, I think they're gonna be popular too. I think the Cubs can just assault Justin Dunn. Ten mile an hour winds blowing in. Oh, I didn't know that part. Chicago. Okay. okay. Um, I didn't know that. Okay. And and I actually would go the other way. I think Dunn is actually the only play in this game. I have. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay. So I, my current, but I'm currently looking at the numbers I have right now. Like, like basically anybody that's in the top 20 value that's not in on a Milwaukee team is on Chicago. Um, so we'll we'll have to, we'll have to see how that all kind of plays out. But but like you said, I mean, if the wind's blowing in, then then again, you never want to fight that at Wrigley. But and and we know we we know already we don't we don't need to play Nick Madrigal. We we, we spoke to, we talked about this. Yeah, before. unless you're five man stacking. Yeah. Right. But you get, um, you know, but I'll just throw it out that you do get Rafael Ortega. He's 2K flat. Um, Fran Moreas is 2,600. Um, yeah. I mean, again, I don't, I don't really want to fight like intense, you know, big wins. So maybe, maybe not. But, um, but uh, currently, uh, I think the Cubs would be, would be in play. I'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, I'm not, I'm not playing Justin Dunn and I'm not playing Lee. Yeah, I, I certainly think if the weather is 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 not a thing at all. I mean, I'm just looking at the run totals are being as low as they are. I mean, the Reds have a 3.3 run total today against Wade Miley coming back off the injury. It's just weird to see a team with that low of a total like in this situation. Like I could see, I could see it being five and a half if the wind was blowing out, you know. Um, and the Cubs have a 4.2 run total for what it's worth. All right, um, let's move on. Um, I do think that's a game that it's interesting in re revisiting because I I. Don't know what to do with it. Um, I, mean, I literally, I mean, my, 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 my ranking scale, I have Milwaukee, like, you know, like all the way up there. And then yeah. if you just do it by like value, I mean, I have the, I happen to have the Cubs a clear second yeah. um, right now. Um, but we'll, and I have, I see them getting owned too. So, so it's, I think it's a decision that, that, that people are going to have to make to like what to do with your Milwaukee's. Um, so uh, if we do get some wind blowing in and, and the Cubs still remain somewhat popular, then, then, then I'm, um, it's a pretty good fade then. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Exactly. 
All right. What Washington, St. Louis. Um, I actually think uh, Quintana is in play today. Um, I don't like playing him in general, just throwing him out as he's one of the guys who I'm considering. And then I really like more than a stack from St. Louis. I would really suggest trying to get some, maybe some either, you actually just play any bat. And I mean, they've got the cheap Dickerson and Donovan, but then you would the home run upside for, for both uh, Goldie and, and Newt and uh, Arenado. Espino is not a good pitcher, but he doesn't, he keeps the ball on the ground and he, and he just runs into some hard contact every now and then, and he doesn't walk anybody. He's got one of the, I believe he's got one of the lower walk rates. So it's not an ideal five man stack, but I think St. Louis as a mini stack or just even picking out some powers are really is something I'll definitely try to prioritize today. Right. So that's interesting. First of all, from uh, the pitchers, I have Quintana, I mean, just barely outside the top group of values, but not by a lot. Um, and I have him right now, at least being owned only about 10, 12% or something. Mm-hmm. So um, again, we're looking for, for ways to be somewhat different. And this is, you know, Quintana certainly fits that, uh, fits that mold. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that in the mid range, I think people are going to want to play Gilbert at 8,500. Yeah. Um, and, and especially if Cole gets scratched, you know what I mean? If Cole gets yeah. scratched, then, then, then yeah. everything else opens up. Um, so Quintana could, could be overlooked a little bit. Um, and Washington certainly is a team that people like to play pitchers again. And mm-hmm. as far as the hitting goes, I have the Cardinals and it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that you brought that up about their pricing and stuff. And maybe you wouldn't want to do a full stack because they're another, they're a team that I have as again, like one of those teams, below Milwaukee to consider. So I have Toronto there and I have St. Louis is kind of that type of team. But like you said, I mean, you kind of have to use some of the cheapos there. Like I have, I have like Newt Bar, Donovan, right. um, you know, which, which is fine. Gorman. I, I like him. Um, Goldsmith, is he like 7k now or something like that? 200, I mean, but there's, there is some massive that. pinch hit risk for everybody in, in St. Louis. Also, if they, although I don't know, if why you'd want to bring a lefty in against St. Louis. So that sort of negates it a little bit, but they, they right. have just, they just platoon players like crazy. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen, we saw Donovan hit a home run and a triple and two at bats and earlier in the season. And it was the second inning and they took him out of a game where they were up by eight runs. So um, they, they will pinch hit a lot. Um, yeah. So, so with that, well, because you said that because of the pinch hit stuff and because of the price, I think St. Louis is going to kind of drop off. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that secondary list, um, I have, I have some better, I have some better pivots than them. So okay. for me, maybe you're right. Maybe make, make one or two guys from St. Louis, but mm-hmm. don't go full five, man. And Quintana, it's not the type of guy I like to play. Um, but he's going to be on my, in my pool. How about that? Same exact thing here. Um, she, t- can you, I'm going to pause real quick. All right. So we're, we're back and, uh, we're going to talk about Texas and Houston, which I think is going to be another spot we can talk about potentially playing some offense. Um, and, uh, you know, more, maybe more importantly, uh, I don't know if it's more importantly that Framber Valdez is going to end up being really popular if, uh, if we don't have Garrett Cole tonight and I certainly understand it. Uh, and, and I, I, so I, I, I'm on Valdez and, and Houston as of right now. Um, don't know, like it's weird cause we don't want to pay this price in general, like for Valdez, we always say that, but then you look at what he does and it's he's just like so consistent and so efficient with his pitches. And even, even if he's not the highest strikeout per inning guy, like you just look at thirties all over the place, including against this Texas team multiple times. In fact, the last two times he's pitched against them, he put up 29.8 and 32.2. And then they were all the two of his last four starts. Um, He really has owned this team and he is a dominant pitcher that doesn't and 27, the game before that, by the way, that he pitched against them. Uh, it's hard not to prioritize Valdez and it's hard not to like Houston for me, at least as one of the other uh, stacks that are non cores. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I do think that there are other, you know, there are three other pitchers that can, that can, that can score the sim- similarly to Valdez though, you know, uh, even without Cole. So I don't think Valdez lays over the field. I think that he's got a lot going for, for him in the fact that he's going to, you know, he just pitches seven innings a game. He's probably going to get the win. Um, and it's one of those things that if he doesn't strike a guy out, it's because the guy's hitting the ball on the ground and he's getting it out. You know what I mean? Like just, right. just nobody, nobody can, nobody can get anything off him. And, 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 you know, he's playing, he's pitching against Texas who doesn't, who's not that great. And 
you think of the best hitter on Texas, and it's it's uh, Valdez hasn't given up much to lefties all year, you know. So mm-hmm. so when you know, I would I'd be most scared of Seager normally, but I mean lefty lefty, I mean it's, it's exactly what you what you what you don't want, you know. So um, he's uh, definitely a top option. Um, I I don't have a problem play, playing the 10K. Um, I just uh, don't know if, if it's going to be my top play. You know, there there are other guys that I might consider going to, and if and if Valdez is going to be twice the ownership or more, or you know, than some of these guys, I might I might that might be the way I uh, I approach the the big buy and is is maybe maybe wimp out and play some Milwaukee, but just not play Valdez if in fact you get what you want. Which which what, when I say what you want, what that means is you get an early postponement of the Yankee game, right? So right. the people have a chance to come to, 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 to assess it and then have Valdez somehow just become that chalky. I don't think he will be though. I think that people are going to play Bieber. I think they're going to play Gilbert. You know, I think they're going to play Musgrove, you know, whatever. So, so, so I don't think that Valdez is going to be particularly just over chalky. And I guess, I guess I was talking about this with, with uh, Justin the other day. Yes. Last night I'm like, all right, the end of it, we did like kind of my, our own morning grind game. I said, okay, just pitcher. All I want is gun to your head. Who do you, who would you play? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I guess that play is probably Valdez, you know, like, like gun to your head. Who do you play? I mean, he's got enough strikeout upside. He's got like all the win upside. He's got the matchup. He's at home and all of it, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm really not going to argue with it. it. Interestingly, the, um the Houston side of the hitting is, yeah. I mean, it's the other, it's another, you know, it's another pivot off of off of Milwaukee and and Houston at home. I was talking about this with Justin last night. It always seems as though the the, the fence in left field is is two hundred feet. You know it isn't, but it just looks that way because it's because of the way the way the stadium looks. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that um, that uh, Otto is not the not the worst. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I guess if I would start if I was going to play Houston. I'd start with the left with Alvarez and Tucker, I guess, right? We start with the two lefties. Mm-hmm. Um, but Bregman's always good. So yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe Houston is one of those teams. And they are. I have them kind of rated just alongside of Toronto. I have them owned just about the same as Toronto. And both of them will, will be about maybe one fifth the ownership of Milwaukee or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think Houston is in play. I think Valdez is in play. Uh, I have no interest in any one loss from Texas. I have no interest in auto. Yeah. If, if you get one of these um, situate. Yeah. I really think that I'm going to keep looking at Houston um, today, especially because as of right now, we're not predicting them to be owned very much. And um, I, I think that that's a team that I could see sort of just going nuts on this slate. If it goes, things go their way. Um, all right. Casey and uh, Cleveland. Um so I, you know, again, I, I think that they, in in the list of all the teams that you, you're considering as other stacks, I, I do think that one of those could be Cleveland. Um, I have them below Houston. I have them below St. St. Louis. And I have them basically similar to Toronto and Baltimore. Um, and I do have Bieber as the other starting pitcher I'd want. I think that, I think Valdez will be more popular. And I think he and Bieber are, are pretty close today. Um, I think Bieber, you think of in general for upside. But most of these good pitchers, we've seen what they've done this year, and we haven't seen the monster, monster strikeout stuff that we have in the past from Bieber, although it's been really good. He's really good, like, per inning with his strikeouts. But um, it's just not like – it used to be like I felt like every game was double-digit strikeouts for him. And uh, But either way, this is – I mean, he did have 11 in his last start. This is a great spot for him. So I'm on the Bieber side, and then I'm just considering Houston as one of the others, basically. You mean Cleveland? Cleveland, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, B B Bieber had a kind of a uh, kind of a middle of the road Bieber outing this last one. He had three solo home runs, I think, in the first inning, or or or, or close to it, and yet he still got 25, 27 fantasy points, right? Because you know he strikes out dudes. You know? Yep. Um, like you said, he doesn't strike out fifteen, maybe, but you know, 11, 12 makes up for you know if he gets ten or eleven today or ten today. And maybe he does has a little bit worse game ERA and hit wise than Valdez. I think that the two of them are pretty, pretty damn close. You want to know mm-hmm. the truth? Um, they're pretty damn close. I do have Valdez for whatever reason being owned quite a bit more than Bieber. Mm-hmm. Um, so pick if I have to pick one, which you don't have to on DraftKings, you can play mm-hmm. both. I mean, you really can. 
Um, I'm probably not going to. Um, but yeah, he's safe. I mean, he's safe enough. Um, I don't think I have Cleveland as high as maybe you might. Yeah, I do actually. Sorry. I, I do have Cleveland right there in that mix. Um, uh, Ramirez, listen, I mean, Ramirez, I don't care what his price is. He's always going to be part of any Cleveland stack I play. Yeah. Um, they're you. just not scoring six, seven runs without him being a part of it. And I say that. The last time I, I cashed big, I had Ramirez with a zero. You know, so what the <laughs> hell? Hell do I know? But I like Stephen Kwan and Jimenez and all those all those cheapos and even the Owen Miller. I mean, whatever. Um, so yeah, Cleveland's in that mix. I pro- I have them for whatever reason being owned more than Houston. I can't imagine why. Yeah, well, they have a couple um, of cheap spots in their lineup. That's why. Okay. Uh, okay. And that's my, that's at least my take as to why they're going to be there a little bit more. So, but yeah, so, so they're, so, so they're, so they're in the mix as well. Just don't know which way I'm going to go, but they're certainly in the mix. And so it's Bieber. I have the same thoughts, Bieber and Cleveland or Houston and Valdez, you know, mm-hmm. or Valdez Bieber with cheapos from Cleveland. He's, I don't know. Uh, that, that seems to be a logical way to not play Milwaukee. If you yeah. don't want to, however, uh, may as well get into it. Um, yeah, let's get into Milwaukee, it. Milwaukee at Colorado. Um, you have Woodruff against Cool, and, and Cool has, um, you know, for the most part, uh, been been pretty bad. But you know, from time to time, he puts up a good game. Like he had those those incredible outlier games earlier in the season. He basically shut out Philadelphia at home. He basically shut out the late the, the Lakers, the uh, the Dodgers at home. Um, and he always had some others where he's kind of lived up to the billing. You know what I mean? Uh, the Dodgers did get to him the last time that they uh, faced him at Colorado. So he got that got a little revenge there. Then he went into San Diego and got lit up. Then kind of had a, you know, all right game against the Mets, I suppose. Then at Atlanta, whatever. Um, so uh, Milwaukee in Colorado is just going to project through the roof. Uh, and that's the way that's going to be. Mm-hmm. The, the, the Woodruff play is is one that's that's somewhat interesting to me um obviously we don't usually want to play guys in colorado but you know if you're looking to be different i mean woodruff does have does have ceiling obviously yep and i don't think he's going to be played all that often Um, no matter what uh, especially with with all these other guys that at his price range that don't have to pitch in cores So I, I, I think I, I'm definitely going to consider consider that. Um, and with respect to Milwaukee, they they do have uh, they do show to be the highest projected stack on the slate, kind of top to bottom. Uh, but I feel as though I have to say this every single time when we do these shows, just because I don't know who's here for the first time, and, mm-hmm. and not even that. I mean, just to kind of hammer into it. I think the way you you have to handle situations like this, where one team projects that much higher than everybody else, and they're going to be that much higher owned is you have to make, you can do it one of several ways. Number one is you could you could play them and don't make any concessions along the way and just hope you get the right combination and of everything else, which is probably not recommended. The, the other thing that you could do is if you want to play Milwaukee without making any, any screwing around, like play five-man stacks in Milwaukee, one through five, whatever, you do that, but make sure that if you do that, that you that you do nothing even remotely chalky pitching-wise. Like you got to play like a, like a Quintana, you know, yeah, Bradish lineup or something like that. You yep. know what I mean? <laughs> to, to make that work. Um, or uh, if you want to play decent pitchers and play Milwaukee, you're not completely out of luck. What you could do is 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 either, you know, don't be sequential, like play stacks like one, three, five, seven, one, two, six, nine, whatever. Or, you know, you could just just I don't want to say blindly, but just pick the lowest owned projected of of the players you could do that or you could you could you could go and, and just play the bottom of the order the other thing you could do which is which bobby's made really a lot of success at is is don't fade the game well look it's a, it's, it's projected that way for a reason but don't stack it you know play one guy play two guys play who's going to do this who's going to play like the two and the six from mm-hmm. milwaukee and that's it you know what I mean, and and then you end up, then you could play a, a big old Houston stack or something like that. Yeah. So 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 there are ways to to attack it, but you're gonna have to figure out which way you're gonna do it. Um, but but look, I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, Milwaukee does look like the best uh, the best play. What I want to look at is if uh, I didn't check this out yesterday, is did Christian Yelich play yesterday? 
He I he finally he did. did. He finally did. Yeah. Play. Uh, that's awesome. He kept on getting scratched, and I said, you know why they keep scratching, keep scratching. Look, they're going to finally let him play for a finally for the cake matchup, and he was one for five with three fantasy points at eight hundred percent ownership. Um, batting first, that's beautiful. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, Milwaukee looks like the best play, um, and it's up to you and up to everybody how they just how you decide to play them. Yeah, I agree with most everything what you said. Um, I think if you do make a full five man stack, if you're going to do that, I wouldn't suggest doing the 2,500 probably, but I, uh, but if you're going to do this, I don't mind the idea of playing Woodruff with it. You actually get some correlation there. It is 91 degrees in Colorado. So it's like exceptional hitting weather on top of everything else. Um, uh, the problem with Milwaukee in general, as a stack, they don't walk. Um, so it seems very suitable to me to make Milwaukee, a three to do a three or four man, that would be one way you could get different and then combine them with one of these 5% or lower owned stacks. And I think that's a viable route. If you did want to not fade this game, I think I'd be looking at three or four. Um, and the, the pr- preferred guys are are probably the, you know, the Yelich McCutcheon Renfro. I think Renfro would be my favorite of those guys. Adamas uh, would be my favorite, you know, other guy. And then I always hate the, the Tellez can get pinch hit for but it's just, will they bring a lefty in depends on where he's hitting in the lineup, probably third. So just depends on what part of the lineup comes up when they bring the lefty. Oh, well, well, in. well, with, with, with this, with this, with this logic has going for it, the pinch hit tell, tell us thing is that if you get Yelich uh, hitting lead off and he's a lefty, right. So they might, you know, if, if Yelich is coming in, they might, they might, yeah, if it's like a one, one two, right three right in this, right. in the fifth inning or something like that. Yeah. It, it, yeah. you, it, you bring a lefty in to pitch to Yelich, and then you also have Tellez who yeah. gets the yeah. So I I I don't know. I I personally uh, I I do like. I mean, Tellez it's a great spot. It's a great spot for everybody here, and they're just going to be so owned. It's just how much of that shock do you want to eat? My natural lean is I think they probably at my first glance will end up being my three man stack to go along with my five man or a, or a, a four three one or something like that. Um, but I just don't want to make them my primary stack at this ownership. I just think it's it's just wrong. I agree. Um, all right. Next, we have the Angels and Tigers, right? Um, yep. So I, I, I don't think this is anything I'm going to do anything with, to be honest with you, but I initially was thinking about the Angels a little bit. Uh, uh, Escobar didn't look great the last time out. The Angels have actually been kind of hitting the ball a little bit. Um, which is kind of surprising, but uh, I also think that you could make a. An, oh, my, they made Myers only forty eight hundred. I, I have him as the top, I have him as the top point per dollar play on the slate by like a lot. So yeah, I didn't realize they dropped his price down there. I, that's that's. I mean, you have a righty against the Tigers. You know what I mean? It's uh. Yeah, and it's and he's and he's he's not like an he's he's not. I mean, I don't think he's terrible either. Um. But even if you get you 15 fantasy points, if that allows you to, to get in some of these these high price stacks that we talked about some some so far, I mean, even Milwaukee is more expensive than most teams that go to court because they're just expensive anyway. Um, but if you wanted to play a Toronto, a Houston, a St. Louis, these expensive bats, yeah, Myers does open it up. So I I, I do think Myers is extremely viable at 4,800. It's just a little, a little bit too cheap uh, for a guy who's going to be able to, you know, if things go well, throw. 90 plus pitches against the Tigers. Um, maybe, yeah, 90, I think I think he could throw 95 pitches. I don't see why he couldn't. And he's had some tough matchups lately, and this is not a tough matchup. So I, I like the idea of playing some Myers, but I don't think I'm going to play the hitting in this game. Yeah, so the Angels, I have them right alongside these other teams we talked about. I think that given the context of where everybody else is priced, I think that Trout might be the most underpriced guy in the entire DK, DK library. You know what I mean? Like, you know, all these guys that are over 6K now, you know what I mean? And Mike Trout is 5,600. Um, uh, so I, I think I'm supposed to just keep playing him, if you want to know the truth. Yeah. Um, uh, and the Angels are just, they look, they look, you know, they look really good. Uh, Fletcher was the only guy that didn't get in the act yesterday. He was over, like, leading off. And he was one of the more chalkier ones. You you didn't, I guess you didn't. I didn't I play know, yesterday. Play or whatever, but. But, but they were really, really super duper popular, the Angels last night. And we we're talking about with Justin, like how, who, who died and said the Angels are supposed to be freaking popular? They haven't hit forever. And then Justin was like, yeah, but this is Tyler, uh, not Tyler, it's whatever his name is. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't matter. And, and they, they put up like 10 runs like it was nothing, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
Like Trout had a home. I think everybody had a home. Trout had a home run. Otani had two home runs. The only guy that didn't get in there was the Fletcher, who was part of like everybody's everybody stacks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, once again, I think Trout's good. I think Otani's good. I, I like the Renikfo. Um, I like him. I like Taylor Ward. So I think I think this is cer- I think this is certainly in play as well. And again, I hate to I hate to pl- I hate to talk about about a slate this way because I very rarely do with all these different options, but. This is what I have. I mean, this is what I have. I have like four or five teams that are all kind of tied for the for the position of of losing to Milwaukee. But I'm going to probably figure out which. I'm going to try one of them, and it very well could be the Angels. Yeah, I, I, I could I could see it. I don't I don't have a major problem with it. I just personally decided a different route today, and maybe it's just going that Erod is occasionally really good, <laughs> like, yeah. and it is occasionally, <laughs> but. But I, but I but I don't mind any of the, what you're saying. Trout at 5600 does stand out as being a reason, a very reasonable play. Um, all right, Musgrove and Kelly in San Diego. Um, this is more of a 150 ish type of stack for me. Oh, that, oh no, sorry, I'm sorry, I skipped a game. Uh, no, you didn't. Seattle and uh, Seattle and I have them next. Chicago. Yeah, I have them next. That's my fault. Um, oh no, you, oh, you do have Arizona San Diego. I'm not my yeah. bad. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah, that's fine. Um, Arizona San Diego, one of the 640 games. Uh, only large field, probably, but I think that uh I, first of all, I, I'm not I'm not especially interested in Musgrove tonight. Uh Arizona really? has been good. Yeah. I have Musgrove below B- Bieber Valdez at the top, uh, below Gilbert. And I probably am going to just skip Musgrove, but I, I do think uh, this is another one of those, hey, you're playing the the lottery type of stacks, but I would take a shot with San Diego. Yeah, so uh, Kelly is coming off a really, really, really good performance, um, and he's been he's gotten better, man. I mean, he's just not the guy that we're supposed to go after every game. Um, and every once in a while, he has a bad game too. But he's been he's been pretty good. I don't know if I could get to San Diego, but um, I, I have Musgrove just just barely below the top guys, and I have I have him right alongside of Gilbert, even 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 uh, with the price. Um, so, uh, and I have him. I have him owned too. I have him and Gilbert very similarly owned. So uh, I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I think, I think Musgrove is, uh, is, is, is definitely in place. So I don't know if it's going to be my 2,500 one, but I think, I think I'm going to end up in my, if I play 20, my 30 lineup build, if I do that, I think that I would end up shuffling these guys, honestly, mm-hmm. like Valdez, Valdez, Bieber, Gilbert, Musgrove and Myers even. Um I don't know if I'd get to Quintana in only 20 entry, in only 20 entries. I don't know. I would see, but uh, I'd end up shuffling them. And when it comes to the big buy, and I don't know which, I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I really don't. I'm gonna, if you gonna pick one, I'll, I'll go for updated ownership, uh, 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 ownership uh, updates, and just mm-hmm. kind of make my decision. But I, I really don't have Musgrove much, much worse than those others. Yep. Um... Yeah, I, I understand it. I'm just going to say again that Arizona has been sneaky, really good lately. Uh, they've actually been the best team in baseball over the past few weeks. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm having a hard time personally uh, prioritizing Musgrove as high. I don't I think the run line is a little too low and I'm actually just not as interested. And I, I but again, I do think San Diego is a reasonable long shot stack. And remember it's a lot warmer here on the West coast than it's ever been. It was in, in, in the city of Santa Barbara, it's 120 basically up here um, in the Valley, but it was 110 at t- hit reached 110 in, in the city of Santa Barbara, which ne- never happens. LA is going to be in 85 tonight, which we should have mentioned for the angels game. It's going to be 80 in San Diego. It's just not, these teams just don't usually play with this warm of weather. So um, definitely giving a boost to the bats in that, in that case. All right, so right. so this so Logan Gilbert, right? So when he was, and this is another reason why you're supposed to play Mayors, right? So so Logan Gilbert in his last start, we talked about this, right? He was he was slow to come back to get his pitch count back or whatever, and 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 in a couple of, of kind of blog games, and he was going at Detroit, and we're like, okay, this is the nut matchup for righties. I don't care what he's done recently. We're just going to play Gilbert, and we talked about this, and I said, you know what? I don't know if I could do it because his. He doesn't really have that big of a leash. You know, what is when he's going to get 80 pitches or something like that? Well, lo and behold, in 84 pitches, he got 33 fantasy points. You know, mm-hmm. these Tigers can't do anything against mm-hmm. righties. Now, not that not that Mayers is as good as Gilbert, obviously, but, you know, that th- this 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 is like streaming, what was it, tight ends against the Browns or whatever it was. You know what I mean? Like, this yeah. was, this was, uh, 
the, I mean, this is your, I think you're supposed to play mayors here uh, in, in the, uh, against the Tigers. But in any case, uh, Logan Gilbert, as I mentioned, in, you know, several times throughout this, this, this show is, is another guy that's really in play. Um, he, he's, he's got talent. He's got, he doesn't have, listen, he doesn't have the leash of these other guys. Um, I don't want to say the least. He's just not the pitch count of these other guys. And know? partly that's it's like, because he doesn't always need it. That's one thing we should probably right. No, exactly. But you know, I mean, I, I, it's and, and his matchup is 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 good, but not good, but good. You know what I mean? It's 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 not good because the White Sox do have some hitters. But the what we've done this for like a while. Like, so bad White against righties. The White Sox are so bad against righties, and and it's it's kind of like. It's not like the Tigers bad is going to run. You know, it's not no, like the same no. the Tigers, but but still, I mean, Gilbert's got to get a bump uh, against the White Sox, so that makes up for that. So I think he's right alongside of these other these other guys as as, as the top play on the board. Um, yep. uh, and I also I think I'm going to still make the same case uh, as far as hitting goes, and I'm doing this every single time they play. It's the same. It seems like the same speech. So Seattle doesn't really project all that well. They're really not making it like with these other teams yet. I still kind of feel like playing them. Um, uh, Cueto, I mean, I guess he's fine, you know, whatever. But I, I just think Seattle's been playing really well. They've been swinging the bat really well, and I would I would just continue to take shots, especially especially on slates where you're you're, you're looking for other stuff. You know, um, I'll put these Seattle guys in play. I mean, I won't listen. They're not going to, I'm telling you right now, they're not going to be my five man stack in the 2,500 or anything like that. But, but I, I will always kind of force this team in. I just think they're always kind of under project. Yep. I think that's all uh, completely fair. Um, this might be the hottest game I've ever remember seeing at night in Oakland. It's 87 degrees, which just doesn't happen as that, that often at night. Um, and it, it it brings Atlanta as as one of the stacks that I think is extremely viable tonight. Um, I don't like playing Atlanta outside of Atlanta in general as much because they tend to get ownership and they tend to they're always really expensive. But I I could see them having a big game here and and they're gonna they're gonna be low owned tonight. And um, Atlanta is another one of those teams that I'm just gonna put in my 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 my, my consideration stacks at the moment. Um, at the same time, I think that everything we said about, like, I think, I, I think I would, I don't understand this projected ownership at all for Kyle Wright. I, I don't buy it. Um, I, especially if Cole doesn't pitch, I think Kyle Wright's a better play than Musgrove. Um, I like the matchup better. I'm not afraid of, of the A's. Kyle Wright has a leash. He's been very, very good. Um, he's been incredibly like consistently good, if not great at times. And I think that he's a, a really strong play. So I, I, I like Kyle Wright better than I like uh, Musgrove and Woodruff. And that's partly why the reason why it's harder to argue for Woodruff today, um, as a, even as a right. weird play, because I would usually take that shot. But Kyle Wright is right there in the same price range with, a, you know, basically the second nut matchup almost in baseball. I mean, you've got four guys who were playing minor league baseball not long ago, and then a couple guys who will probably be designated for assignment next year in this lineup that he's facing. So I like Kyle Wright tonight, and uh, he's a, he's something I could consider doing different at pitcher. It's just hard to prioritize him over Valdez and Bieber, but I do think that the rest of the field will be that way at the same time. So maybe playing he and Valdez is a way you could get a little bit different with your pitching. And you could always um, do stuff like if you played Gilbert and things aren't going your way, you could you could pivot to to right if you want to do that. Um, mm -hmm. These are all these all three all. You know, for all three of these games, these late games between you have Musgrove, Gilbert, and um, and Wright. I think you're. I think you're correct. I think. I think Wright. I. 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 I agree with with what the ownership's going to be. I. I don't think that that Wright's going to get played. I think you're going to be able to get him mm -hmm. at at at, a, at low ownership and 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 who died and said Oakland, Oakland's good all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So 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 yeah, I I, I agree with that. I didn't really think about it. I, I did have Kyle Wright couple of points below these guys but this is this this is one where i really think it, you are going to get 10 percent ownership or less mm -hmm. um it's a late game and it's competing with with other pitchers that are just a little sexier to play yep. you know um they love playing gilbert people you know and whatever and musgrove people like playing musgrove as well so maybe maybe this is the idea actually is to is to 
is to is to play Kyle Wright in the big one. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to think about that actually. But it's something definitely to consider because if you're if you're going that, to that's the kind of thing you do with a Milwaukee stack, especially um, that you can at least you know differentiate pitching wise, and he could out he could easily be the highest scoring pitcher on the slate. Um, all right. Part of the uh, other, the other priority stack for me, and it's going to be a bullpen game. Not my favorite thing to do on big slates in general. It's 85 degrees in LA with winds blowing out 10 miles an hour in center field. Uh, the Dodgers in a bullpen game against anybody right now in any kind of a game against anybody, to be honest with you, I'm really pissed off at myself. I didn't play. I think it was Saturday night because what remember I keep pointing this out. I think it's the fifth time that, uh, that Mania has faced the Dodgers between the Padres and, and Oakland. And he's given, they've given they've, the, the fewest runs they've scored is 10 in any of those games. And they scored 12 and hit four home runs. I think the other night, um, the Dodgers, I think are, are an awesome stack, um, and I definitely have them as one of one of my favorite four tonight. They they they're they're something you could do. You could just play the best team at low ownership and feel pretty good about it. And that's that's another way to get different on this slate. I'm not playing Tyler Anderson uh, just because the strikeouts are too low, even though he's been a really good real life pitcher. But I I am a fan of the the Dodgers tonight, and I think that their run total line is. If you're going to tell me they're going to score less than five runs tonight, I will tell you that's not going to happen most of the time. I have the Dodgers right alongside of Toronto um, as as my you know as my top uh, pivot stack. Um, so I, I agree with you. I, I'm very confused with the very extremely low ownership projections that I'm seeing right now on the Dodgers. Um, They're expensive. I guess so. So I guess if you want to play them, then you then then maybe you have to do some Quintana Quintana stuff or some some mayor stuff or something like that, or, Ooh, how about, how about Quintana and mayors together? How about that? How about them? Happen? That's something you could do. <laughs> um, so you could do that. Um, and then just, you know, you're definitely going to be cashing for zero until about midnight. Um, but uh, who knows? Uh, I, I, I agree with you. The Dodgers did some funny business with their lineup yesterday. I don't know if you noticed that they, 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 they scratched a couple of guys. Um I know because I was going to, I was playing them against, uh, I was, I was, I was going to play them a little bit against Logan Webb out of spite. And then they, a couple of guys got scratched. Uh, I forget who it was. I think Justin Turner didn't play. I think, um, I don't remember, but like the lineup, just, they had, I had a couple of guys scratching the lineup. So I just ended up not doing it. Um, in any case, the, the pricing is a little bit funky, right? With the Dodgers, you have a couple of guys who are really expensive. Like you have bets at 65 and then you have um, Turner at 60 at 6,000. Um, and Freeman, but Freeman's reasonable now at 5,600. And then you have, you know, all, all these other guys are good. Uh, Bellinger, what is he, 4K or something like that? Bellinger is 30, 30, Gallo is 36. Yep. You know, uh, Muncy is somewhat reasonable. So uh, it's going to cost you if you want to play, you know, play, play, play Mookie and, um, and Trey Turner, but. You know, you don't have to play them. You can play other guys. Um, there, there, there is a lot of weird risk in this game for the Dodgers. Just, just to throw out some things. I, I'm really curious what the starting lineup is, because yeah. they that you're going to have the righty starter for one inning, but then you've got the lefty coming in probably for one to two innings, and right. they're just going to mix it up with the Giants, which is not the dream scenario. And it does make all these lefties maybe a little bit more questionable to me. Obviously, Muncie will still stay in the game and stuff like that. They're not going to pinch hit for him um very often but I'm, I'm really curious to see how the lineup comes out for the Dodgers because Joey Gallo that could turn into one or two at bats yes uh, there's just some sure. danger in, in this a little bit but uh so 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 you know again I, I would prioritize the top guys but it is like we said it's really hard to get them in um and, and, and I and I think the Dodgers in Atlanta are sort of a similar type of stack tonight I just like the Dodgers a little bit better um but they're but they're they're very close to me in these last games I think that this is this may be where the slate gets one is, is the end of the day um, stuff. So I, I, I have my priorities as the Dodgers um, trying to get a, a, a less amount of Milwaukee, a smaller Milwaukee stack, Houston and St. Louis as a mini stack. Um, but I think as a full stack, Houston is currently my favorite uh, with the Dodgers, Atlanta, Toronto, Baltimore, and Cleveland all in consideration. Yeah, I don't really have – a favorite right now, but I do want to go back to um, once we get a more some more weather indications and it's, just dive into it a little more. 
to, to look at this Cubs thing again. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that one because uh, uh, I, I, I was under the impression that we're supposed to go after Justin Dunn. Um, well, there's, there's, that's not necessarily untrue. Um, although Dunn also does have some strikeout stuff too. Uh, it's just the pricing is, is kind of tough. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It, it, yeah. It's tough to ignore the Cubs, but at Cubs at pop at high ownership, I don't know, like the three, the three best point per dollar plays look like the Cubs guys. Um, I'd rather play Dickerson probably than those guys. Um, let's, I'm just looking at value here. Cause we talked about a lot of expensive stacks, Dickerson, um, 